In this video, I will demonstrate how to use Excel to carry out the chi-square test of independence on a two-way table. In particular, the table used here as an example reports data from a survey that examines the responses of a random sample of university graduates and non-graduates on the topic of oil drilling. The responses are categorized according to these three values support, oppose or don't know relating to oil drilling and furthermore the subjects are divided into two categories according to whether or not they hold a university degree. The first step of this process involves calculating total frequencies for each main category. So I can add a column and I can calculate first of all the sum over the first row. This value corresponds to the total number of subjects that support oil drilling irrespectively of whether or not they are university graduates. I can now drag down the formula to calculate corresponding sums for the categories oppose and don't know. I can now do the same to work out totals for the column categories. In particular, the total number of subjects holding a university degree is 438 and if I now drag across the same formula I can calculate the total number of subjects that do not hold a university degree and finally the overall total. 827 is the total number of subjects in the study and it has to be consistent, it has to match the sample size. So this is a useful first check that the calculations are correct. I now want to calculate the so-called expected values, meaning the values that I should have obtained in the survey if there is no association between the two variables involved. To perform this calculation I can first of all set up a new table and this table will contain my expected values. The original table contains the so-called observed values, so the values that were observed, observed through the uh, survey. The way to calculate expected values involves performing, first of all, a multiplication between the row total and the column total and then divide by the overall total, okay, in cell DC in this case. I now want to be able to reuse this formula across the different rows and therefore because the column total will not change I can require this term B6 to be constant. So I can insert dollar signs and this is most easily done by highlighting the cell and then pressing F4. I also want the overall total to stay constant and again I can do this by highlighting the cell coordinates and pressing F4. I should now be able to drag down the formula and calculate the expected values over all rows.
I can now do the same for the second column, but I need to adjust the formula. So what I want to do, I want to again consider the total across the first row. I want to divide by the total of the second column now. So this is going to be C6. I want this to remain constant, so I keep the dollar signs. And again, I want to divide by the overall total. I can again drag down and obtain the remaining expected frequencies. It is useful at this point to perform a check by calculating again overall totals for the main categories. So if I sum over the first row, I should obtain exactly the same total as for the table of observed frequencies. If I drag down the formula, I should obtain again the same totals as in the first table of observed frequencies. And the same check can be performed on the columns. So again, I verify that the totals are consistent with the original table. I can now calculate a, another table that will contain the individual contributions to the chi-square statistic. So I can again reuse my original table, but now this table will contain chi-square term. The way these are calculated involve for each combination of categories calculating first a difference between the observed values and the corresponding expected value. This difference needs to be squared to remove any sign effect and then I, and I need to divide this quantity by the expected value. The same formula can be reused to calculate all other contributions to the chi-square statistic so that I can very easily work out all the terms I need. I can now compute the final overall value of the chi-square statistic, which is equal to the sum of the various contributions that I've just calculated in the chi-square table. So I can sum across these six terms and I obtain a value of 11.4608. Now I want to interpret this value and to do this I'm going to look up different values of chi-square critical thresholds corresponding to different alpha levels. So different significance levels for these particular problems. Let's start with the conventional significance level of 0 0.05, so 5% significance. The corresponding chi-square critical can be looked up, of course, on a table such as those that are typically found in textbooks, but it can also be obtained using Excel very simply using this function called chi square chi sq dot inv dot rt. 
This is a function that returns the inverse of the right tail probability of the chi-square distribution. The function requires the alpha value that corresponds to the tail probability and the second input parameter is the number of degrees of freedom. The number of degrees of freedom is obtained by multiplying together the number of rows minus 1 and the number of columns minus 1. In this particular example we have two rows and three columns and therefore 2 minus 1 1 times 3 minus 1 2 1 times 2 gives me 2 degrees of freedom. And the critical value obtained is 5.99. Since the statistic is greater than the critical value, I can reject the null hypothesis at 5% significance. It is now reasonable to ask whether the evidence is even stronger meaning that I can now check whether a smaller significance level will also lead to rejecting the null hypothesis. To calculate the critical value for an alpha level of 1%, I can simply reuse the formula and obtain a value of 9.21. Again, the chi-square statistic is greater than the critical value, so I can carry on and check the critical value, calculate the critical value for a smaller significance level of 0.005 corresponding to 0.5% and I obtain a value of 10.6 which is again smaller than the chi-square statistic so I can further calculate the chi-square critical for an alpha value of 0 0.001 and I now obtain 13.81. In this case, in this last case, the chi-square statistic is less than the critical value for a significance level of 0.1%. So I can conclude that the null hypothesis can be rejected at a significance level of 0.5%. Furthermore, I can also conclude that the p-value for this particular problem lies between 0.005 and 0.001.